Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to Sixty. Now, firstly, apologise, or I apologise in advance for any weird camera shakiness going on. I'm going to try and film this with a different camera because I think this is going to pick up the laptop screen a lot better. But in this episode, I'm going to attempt to do an MSD81 swap. So, if you've been following along, we managed to brick some modules, and I've got a, I've got a shout out. A uh, lovely commenter said I was using the VVDI Brick Tool Pro, which I thought was quite funny. Um, but yeah, we're using the VVDI BIM Tool Pro and trying to read the ISN off a couple of DMEs just did not go well. Um, basically, when it tries to load its modified firmware onto the DMEs, it just crashes. Really annoying, it's supposed to do it. Um, but we did manage to bring them back to life in that car up there with WinKFP. And in fact, this is the DME out of the E93. It is an MSD81 and it's the DME that I'm gonna use for the DCT swap. The DCT is coming out of this vehicle and going into this car. Now, because of the way I'm doing the swap, the DCT, although I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure the DCT also has ISN security on it. So we need to make sure that the DCT matches the ISN that's gonna be into my car. Now, I can actually do that by using the original MSD81 ISN, that's gonna match the DCT, obviously. So the last thing I need to do to get it all to work in my car is change the ISN in my CAS module. That's what we're gonna to do today. And if I can change the ISN in the CAS module, I should be able to fit this DME in and it should work, in theory, in theory. There's a bit of coding going on, but minor details. So I've got BIM Tool Pro up. One thing I have done as an extra little bit that's not on camera, I have got the index Sorry, the flow rates of my injectors from the original DME. I mean, I could get it by manually getting in there, but it was just quicker to get it through ISTA, which is what we've got a king right in the right spot. Very helpful. Um, anyway, moving on with BIM Tool Pro. So I've got it connected up to the car. Ignition is on. Got my IS gauge cluster. <laughs> uh, so what we need to do is go to CAS information and connect. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the EEPROM from my CAS module, slowly. There we have it there. Now let's read the EEPROM. The dealer key should be taken away from the ignition switch. If its key is keyless, move it out of the car. There is no key in ignition. Okay, so we've got to take the key out. This is not a keyless key, that one, so it can sit up there, no worries. We'll click OK. Current EEPROM is not the whole EEPROM. Please read and save it, then continue with other functions. Okay. That does scare me quite a lot, but we'll see what happens. It is reading data. Okay, so that has got the EEPROM from this car's current CAS. The other thing that scares me, it is the CAS 3 plus plus. Apparently these are extra awkward. And now we're gonna save to file. And the EEPROM, I actually saved it before I made the other key, but I need to use number two, because I've now got another key saved on this EEPROM. So we'll use that one, save to file, we're good. Now from here, I can use this feature in Exchange ECU or CAS. So we go over to there. Well, that's what I'm hoping to do anyway. And we're going to modify a CAS 3 plus from an EEPROM dump file. So load from file. Okay, and we got the CAS EEPROM2, which we just saved. I have a working key. So the brick tool wants me to put the key into its little reader thing. Oh, that's... Okay, I just heard that make some noise. I think the uh, USB cable might be getting a bit dodgy. Anyway, we'll have a working key, see if it works. Input original key, support disabled, BIM tool programmer, and press OK. Can't detect transponder. Please input key into transponder. Okay, why is it being a pain? Try it that way. This is an aftermarket key, by the way. All right, no. We may have an issue with... Yeah, M tool had disconnected. All right. Okay, let's go back. We're gonna do that process again. Sorry, everyone. We've now reconnected Vim tool. I'm doing it through a CAS dump. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's do it through read module information. 
Yeah, bugger it. All right. Read module information. Read ECU ISN. Let's see if it will read the ISN straight through OBD without using the EEPROM. Now this read ECU ISN is what bricked me the other day. If you have a working key, yes we do, the key is in. Do you have a working key? Yes. Okay. So I think it uses the key information to somehow decrypt the ISN. So there we go. I have the ISN from this CAS module. So what I'm going to do, I've actually got a text file that I started the other day. So that is the ISN that I managed to get from the CAS on that vehicle. So if we go E92 ISN, we'll save this in case we need to put it back in. So there we have, basically that should be the ISN that's on the MSD81. This is the ISN from my car. So what I'm gonna try and do is update the ISN to the CAS module, which we should be able to do. Support write ISN via OBD. Don't support write VIN via OBD. Okay, so we can't change the VIN, but we should be able to change the ISN. So we'll delete that one. Paste that one. Now, I don't know if you can tell how much I'm shaking. I'm very nervous about this. Let's update the module. Connecting to CAS system. Connected start, transfer, and receive. This is where we're going to brick it. Start security login. Dealer key should be taken away from ignition switch. Okay, I'm just going to take it away from this thing. I don't know if it's going to cause any problems. We'll go OK. Reading data. Writing data. Please wait. Success. Woo! Well, that is horrifically scary. So, my car now shouldn't start because... Actually, that's not picking up that error. Um... Basically, the ISN that's on my CAS module now doesn't match my VIN and it should st my, my DME, so it should stop it from firing. Um, hmm. I might take the battery charger off and we'll test it just so that you can see what's going on. Okay. Okay, so I'm doing all this with a rather hefty battery charger. But we will just plonk it there for now. That is powered off. Um, actually, what I might do, just in case the engine shakes because it's going to try and crank. So we'll pump that down. Now I have got my DME box open, but I haven't undone anything yet. So if this is updated to ISN, King's trying to escape. Hey King, come back out here. Come on. Just wants to play ball. Okay, so my key is in the ignition. We do have the ELV error. Now we got that error when I did the key and that'll be because the CAS has been written to, it needs to resync the CAS module with the electronic steering lock. But let's see what happens when we try and start the car. That sounds terrible, but I think that means a good thing. So because the ISN in the DME no longer matches the ISN in the CAS module, the car is going, I'm not going to start. So, the next thing I need to do is fit this MSD81 to the car and see if it starts. All right, because I've got the JB4, I've got an absolute mess of wires, so I'll get all that swapped over and you'll see me shortly. Okay, so the MSD81 is in. We now have two MSD80s. Jesus Christ, that is my MSD80, I think. Whoops. Anyway, we've got two MSD80s on the bench. MSD81 is in the car. Now, I was half tempted to just try and start it, but it shouldn't start because even though the ISNs match, the VIN is wrong. It's also got all the software for the DCT. And I'm also thinking because I run Flex Fuel and lots of other weird stuff on this car, I should probably flash my custom tune onto it. Now, I have already got a MSD81 or an IJEOS map from JSR. So I'm going to put that on first. There's something I thought that might be interesting to do. I'm just going to load up IMPA. The car is not on. Shall I just hook the battery charger back up again? Sorry, two seconds. It's up and running, pumping the current in. And I'll just turn the ignition on. 
Okay, no crazy errors. We're still getting the steering lock error. But what I want to do is do an identification, see if we can read the VIN number from that ECU. So we've just gone to E90, functional jobs. Yes, yes. And if I go UIF, it should read out all of the module data. Should. Okay, have we got DME there? Hmm. Ah, hang on. So DME has thrown an error. It says error size UIF. Don't like the look of that. Not really sure why it would do that. What we might do is exit out of here and I'm gonna load MHD onto it with this. So I'll just flash my MHD map and it should maybe work. Oh no, I'm gonna try it anyway. Really not sure what we're doing here. What could go wrong? Okay, so just a quick update. I connected M MHD to the car, and I've got a screenshot here, but it showed the CAS VIN number and the DME VIN number were different. So the, the DME still had all the VIN number from the original donor car. All I've done is flashed the map that JSR has sent me. It is set up for a DCT car, apparently, and I guess it's just got something to do with the way the shifts will work. I don't know exactly, but he said it will work good with a DCT um, and a JB4. And I'm hoping that that updates the VIN number. So we need to update the VIN number on the DME for it to work as well. So even though we've got the ISN security done, the car will still want the VIN numbers to match for it to start, I believe. Or at least have all the crap in there for the flex fuel. So it is doing a right, it is a full right. Um, we're 17% in. And I'll update you guys once the right is done. So 50 seconds left. And what I'm thinking at this point, I still have to modify the injector values in Istor or Impa, um, but I'm hoping that once this right is done, the car should actually start. I hope. Scary, scary. 30 seconds left. You guys can be with me for this scary moment. Um, just in case you're wondering, the error that's on the dash is just the steering lock error. And that's because I've flashed the CAS. And it seems that when you flash these cash modules, cash? CAS modules, you do need to resync the steering lock with the CAS. I don't know. Some sort of security thing. Um, five seconds left. So the car should do a load of rebooting. Just in case anyone's wondering, being able to do this with MHD is a relatively new thing. Um, I know guys that were doing MSD81 swaps one or two years ago, you couldn't actually change the VIN number successfully with MHD. So we'll just give it that 30 seconds. I'm gonna lock the car. Hey, my key still works. I was also a little bit concerned about if I change the ISN, will the current keys for the car work? But they do. They do, they do, they do. Okay, that right took 16 minutes and 56 seconds. Might get this cable out of the way. And just keep waiting for the car to sleep. For about 30 seconds. Okay, car's unlocked. Seatbelt is still on. Let's power it up and see what errors we get. I am expecting, well, I could possibly get faults with the DME um, because it's not designed for this car. It's got the DCT software on it. <sighs> Talk about nerve wracking. Okay, I think that's okay. I do need to just disconnect that battery charger as it's a homemade power supply. I just don't want the alternator current going through it. just in case. The car's beeping away. There's no, no errors on the dash. Let's see if it fires up. <gasps> We've done an MSD81 swap. Wow, she idles. And this car is on E85. It's got about E60 in the tank, so it wouldn't idle nicely if it was still running. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, let me clear that steering lock error which we're gonna do with the Brick Tool Pro. Even though it didn't brick my CAS module, that's its new name. Until BVDI make it do what they say on the box, I'm calling it the Brick Tool. All right, 
Let's get this plugged back in. And actually, I will switch you guys back over to the other camera. So actually, the VVDI tool is still on that same window it was where we wrote the ISN to the CAS. What I might just do, I'm just gonna read out the CAS information again. Connect. Yeah, she's still talking to the car, absolutely fine. What we do need to do is just go sync CAS and ELV. Actually, to do this, we do need to power it on. Is it powered on? No, it's not. Oh, I've got the key out. Gotta put the key. The key has gone missing. Oh no. Give me a heart attack. Right. Key on. Okay. So we do need the power on for this. We'll go sync, CAS, and ELV. Synchronization between CAS and ELV. Synchronization not possible. All right, we'll try it with the key out. I still haven't got my head around how this stuff wants to work. Hmm. Sync, CAS, and ELV not possible. All right, let me see if I can work out why it won't sync. Okay, just so you know, I just read the EEPROM, saved the EEPROM as a backup, and then it would sync the CAS straight away without the key in it. So, God knows how it decides what it wants to do. But, that's going to conclude it. Actually, I'll just, we'll just do one last thing. We'll just make sure that error has gone. You can't need to vacuum, I know, I know. A little bit of a stutter on cold starts normal for the E85 in winter here. Errors are gone. So that's it. I have done an MSD81 upgrade on my car, which was crucial to do the DCT swap. But hey, maybe some people will be in a similar situation. So if you can get your donor DME CAS module, you can use this tool to read the ISN from the CAS and then fit the donor MSD81 or the second hand MSD81 to your car. The reason I want to do these videos, um, there's a lot of guys that can't get to a dealer or even a technician that has access to do all this sort of stuff. Um, and it's not always viable to post your hardware into someone to do it. So like what I was thinking, a lot of guys could buy this tool. It is a thousand US dollars, but you can use it for the features you want to do, make a couple of keys and then sell it on and maybe lose 200 bucks on the tool, but it might work out cheaper than even paying for the service anyway. However, on the same note, you do obviously have the huge risk of bricking something and then needing someone like Arno to help you out, which is what happened to me. Anyway, I'm gonna end this video off here. Before I go and edit it, I will code my injectors in. But yeah, we've got an MSD81 in the car. That's sick. All right. So it's, it's time to get the transmission out of that car and get it bolted into this one. I'm excited. Don't my IS gauges just look cool? All right, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Actually, I'll just sort of tack it onto the end of the video. So to do the injector coding, Okay, I suppose it's coding, the flow rate adjustments. You just go in ISTA, vehicle management, service functions, go down to powertrain, engine electronics, and then adjustment functions, adjust injectors, and then injection quantity compensation. And I actually did this on the RB turbo car a little while ago. I'm going to do it a different way. So was a new DME installed? Yes, it was. Continue. Okay, now they are the current adjustment values there, and I'll compare that to the ones that I recorded earlier. They are different, so we need to adjust them. Enter new adjustment values. Oh, continue. For what cylinder do you want to pair the values? All right, I'm gonna go through and do this. I'll update you at the end. All right, so that is all the injector values copied from what they were on the MSD80. We don't wanna add any more values. So we go no, continue, and save adjustment values. Continue. Do you wish to store the following in the DME control unit? Yes, we do.
switch off terminal 15 and terminal R. So that is just pull this little thing out. And I'm gonna lock the car. Because I'm using the Impa cable, sometimes it wigs ISTA out. Not the Impa cable, the KCAN cable. The following values are saved permanently. There we go. Sweet. Switch on terminal 15, which I'm pretty sure is ignition. And continue. End. Sweet. All right, guys. That's it. Job's fully done. Um, one thing I need to thank again is Arno. Even though he didn't really help directly today, it's awesome having him there as a backstop if I've got any technical questions or if I break something. He actually, he saved me the other night and showed me how to get the, uh, the DMEs restored with WinKFP. He's a legend. I'm going to link Arno again. If you need to do any of this sort of work and you're in Europe or e even if you're in an area where you can post him your modules easily, he's the man to speak to. Let him know you saw him on 0-60 and I'm sure he'll look after you. Guys... MSD81's done. We'll catch you on the next one.